Good evening. I apologize for being a few minutes late this evening. I'd like to call this Flint City Council meeting, <coughs> excuse me, to order. Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays. Present. Present. Ms. Poplar. Present. Mr. Nolden. Present. Mr. Freeman. Present. Mr. Davis. Present. Mr. Neely. Here. Ms. Galloway. Present. Ms. Van Buren. Present. Mr. Kincaid. Present. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councilman Mays, you have someone that wants to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. Would you please all rise? Councilwoman Poplar, could you please all rise for a moment of silence? Uh, Councilperson Poplar has an announcement. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I would like a moment of silence for all of the lives that were lost on 370. We may not have known any of them, but God has blessed us that we were not caught up in it. So let's please remember those families and the ones that were lost at sea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, at this time we have a special order. The special order is for Councilman Neely. Councilman Neely. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, at this time, as you guys uh, that's in attendance at today's council meeting, you probably recognize there are a lot of firefighters here in the room with us today. Uh, that doesn't mean the city's gone unsafe, but they're here for a special recognition for the first shift. Uh, our firefighters fight more fires per capita than anywhere else in the state of Michigan. And this past week has been a very difficult week for our community. We had a couple of entrapments a couple rollover accidents, but our firefighters were there to make sure that no additional harm came to residents inside the city of Flint. As I recognize two firefighters, <clears throat> Alex Dunn and Bradley Ortwit, Ortwine, I'm sorry, they're the ones who scored the touchdown for the full team this week, but without that team, those individuals could not have scored those touchdowns, and the touchdowns that I'm talking about is saving the lives of two young children that was trapped in a fire. It's very important for this city council and all council members and the mayor alike to recognize those who champion safety inside of our city. These people run into places where we usually run out of. And I want to make sure that we take the time to tell them that we appreciate them as a city council, as a city council in total and as our mayor as well. So I'm going to ask Chief Cox to come up front. I'm going to ask the full firefighters team to follow him and come up front as well. Bradley and Alex as well. As we recognize these individuals for their fine efforts and heroic duty, we want to put them before the community just so we can say thank you. Mayor, come on up too. As one of 10 elected officials inside the city of Flint, we appreciate you and we thank you and we honor you. And I'm going to let my colleague, Councilwoman Galloway, present. And I'm going to also allow the mayor to present as well, but to the full team. We appreciate you guys, we thank you guys, and we're going to do everything to make sure you guys stay employed and, stay, and make sure that you guys keep us safe every day and every night. Thank you.
Be it resolved on behalf of the citizens of the City of Flint, the Flint City Council is pleased to honor Alex Dunn, firefighter EMT for the Flint Fire Department, for his bravery, dedication, and commitment to the citizens of the City of Flint and for his recent heroic actions in saving the lives of two young children. By order of the Flint City Council of the City of Flint, Michigan, this 24th day of March, 2014. I'm pleased to recognize Bradley Ortwine, a firefighter and EMT of the Flint Fire Department, also for his bravery, dedication, and commitment to the citizens of the city of Flint and for his recent heroic actions in saving the lives of two young children, also by the order of the Flint City Council today, March 24th. We appreciate you guys and we thank you and I think that deserves a standing ovation for these guys. Next, we have a special order to allow remarks by Mayor Walling. Mayor? <clears throat> right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my remarks will be brief. Um, I want to speak to the resolutions that you have um, for consideration uh, later in this meeting, uh, particularly the transition plan. Uh, the transition plan sets out the necessary steps in resolving Flint's financial emergency. And as I see it, as local elected officials for the city of Flint, we have an opportunity now to take responsibility and take actions to adopt a budget with realistic revenues, uh, put in place a strategic plan, and also continue to implement the master plan. Those are uh, objectives that are listed in the transition plan. Uh, I think it's a good plan. It's a clear plan with goals, strategies, and objectives, uh, so we'll know where we stand at all times. Uh, the plan includes an opportunity for input uh, from all of us as elected officials in each of the goal areas, including governance, and that's uh, an area where there's been some discussion about the appropriate role of the Blue Ribbon Governance Committee that myself and Councilman Nolden um, serve on. I think you'll be pleased to see that even in that area, there are two opportunities uh, for us as elected officials to provide input. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to review and comment on the recommendations that come out of the Blue Ribbon Governance Committee, and again, an opportunity to comment on the emergency manager's draft proposal uh, before it's submitted to the state. So in every one of these seven action areas, there's a, a role for us as local elected officials. Uh, the other areas have been given quite a bit of attention through the finance uh, committee meeting. Uh, and you've seen the timelines and the process for the input, not only for this body, uh, but also for the public, to go back to having uh, public hearings on the budget as we've done in the past. So I believe we need to get this work done. Uh, we need to be prepared to lead Flint forward. And I hope that you would uh, please join me uh, in doing our part over the next few months to complete these objectives uh, starting tonight uh, with a show of support uh, for that seven-point transition management plan. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Mr. President. Um, well, I'm still on special order right now, Mr. Mays. When I get done, um, I'll consider um, taking comments from Council members. But right now, I'm going to finish the uh, special order. Our next special order is uh, from Mr. Early. Uh, the emergency manager. Mr. Early. Thank you, Mr. President. To the members of the council, uh, you'll recall a few months ago I came before you and discussed a preliminary draft of what I had uh, 
coined as a seven-point transition management plan designed to lay out a criteria whereby uh, at the appropriate time when the criteria has been met, uh, we can talk about the next steps of Act uh, 436 in transitioning local control back to home rule order. Since that time uh, we discussed that initial draft, uh, you've had an opportunity to look at uh, the points. There are some issues that I want to specifically call to your attention this evening as it relates to the plan and my belief that we're on the right track to making that uh, ascertainment, if you will, about where the city of Flint is headed going forward. I want to take just a few minutes to walk through the points with you, making the presentation and give you some idea as to where we are with the objectives so that you'll have a clear understanding following my presentation of what the goal is and how I hope that we can get there together. I would ask that you allow me to make my presentation first and then I'll be more than happy to entertain any questions that you may have regarding the plan. It is called a seven point transition management plan because that is exactly what it does. It chooses seven points of criterion of measurement with goals, strategy, and objectives, and a status point to keep track of the progress that has been made. The overall goal of the plan is to provide a strategy for determining and evaluating relevant specific criteria for assessing when the city of Flint might be prepared to emerge from emergency manager oversight to a transition advisory board, or a TAB as I will refer to it henceforth. Many of you know that that is a provision of Act 436, and we are following that course, given the progress that has been made over the past couple of years in dealing with Flint's emergence, financial emergency. The seven points identified provide a comprehensive and well-defined benchmark to be reviewed before the determination is made, and that's critical because that gives us the most objective viewpoint from which to make that decision based upon the accomplishments towards the seven points. The plan also defines a data-driven and measurable process for the objective, results-oriented determination of facts. And the plan also establishes the criteria now so that it is clear what the conditions are that will have to be satisfied before the emergency manager will recommend the establishment of a tab. The first plan, or point in the plan, obviously is very critical. It's required by the law, and that requirement is to issue a deficit elimination plan to the state. Now, some of you know there was a, a plan eliminated uh, for 11 12, and we have since eliminated, or um, not eliminated, was, uh, uh, was presented for 11 12, and we have since presented an elimination plan for 12-13. That deficit elimination plan <clears throat> will be presented to the council and the mayor once we get some input back from the state with regards to the proposal. Uh, we've already been advised that, and again this is a draft, so already been, provide, or been advised that the 12-13 uh, deficit elimination plan is credible and it is something we will be pursuing as we go forward. So we've outlined pretty much the criteria for what deficit elimination will look like. The objectives, obviously, uh, is to have the City Council pass a resolution in support of the deficit elimination plan uh, and to uh, get Treasury to sign off on the deficit elimination plan and to confirm with the Mayor and the Council that the deficit elimination plan actions will be a top priority in budgeting. A deficit elimination plan that is not implemented only adds to the financial burden and continues to draw the city further from the goal of solvency and self-governance. So that is the first plan, and that, or the first point in the plan, which is required by the Act. Now the other six points are not necessarily required by the Act, but the Act does require that a decision be made about the solvency of the city. And so the only way to do that is to lay out criteria that you're going to use to determine the long-term probability of success once the uh, emergency is declared abated. 
So that second point relates directly to that issue, and that is a five-year financial analysis. And one of the things that's critical to forecasting and budgeting is to have in place an ongoing financial analysis of revenues and expenditures. The development and monitoring and updating of a five-year financial analysis is critical to the ongoing challenges of financial solvency. It must remain an ongoing process to measure the city's ability to fund services, produce budgets, and proactively manage expenditures. It should be an expectation of this city council and the mayor that these projections will be updated and kept current as you implement your spending plan. To that extent, the mayor and the council finance committee will review the five-year analysis and move that to council. It is my hope that the city council will adopt the five-year analysis as a guideline from which to monitor the city's financial activity. We're already in the process of completing an update of the five-year financial plan. You've had one in place uh, since 2012 uh, when the first appointment of the emergency manager was made in 2011. The first thing that they did was to put together a financial, five-year financial plan. We have since updated that and we'll make that process a part of the ongoing management of the city. Because if you can't reasonably project what your finances are going to be and your expenditures, uh, you'll never get ahead of the game being able to balance a budget and to eliminate structural deficits, which are the two critical factors that generally send cities into uh, emergency oversight. The third point, while not required by Public Act 436, is also critical, and that is a governance component. One of the things that will be most critical as you emerge from the, uh, financial man or the uh, emergency manager oversight is that you have to be able to govern the businesses and affairs of the city, and not only the financial aspects of it, but the organizational aspects of it, as well as the legislative and the, uh, the policy-oriented decisions that you have to make as the legislative body of the city of Flint. The emergency manager will consider recommendations from the Blue Ribbon Committee that was appointed the first part of this year, the committee is also looking at the works of the National Civic League's model charter. They will look at the possibility of a process that reviews the amendment of the charter with the input of the community, of the elected officials, and of the community at large, the public. Because that is a, con a, a condition, if you will, of good governance is to always review and to amend your governing document if they so need. The city of Flint at one time was govern, governing over 200,000 people. It is now governing uh, just a shade over 100,000. The area, the square mileage, uh, the population obviously was more, uh, more dense. You now have areas of population where uh, maybe there aren't that many people. You need to look at the representation on not only a citywide basis but also as it relates to the neighborhoods within the community because, as you know, communities are made of neighborhoods. So you have to take a look at what's most effective in that regard. Executive appointments will also be looked at. It is expected that a formal agreement would be reached between the emergency manager, the mayor, and the council as to what governance revisions are to be reviewed and implemented. And let me just be clear. The purpose of the Governance Committee is to start the discussions, not to end the discussions. You have to frame and focus, when you have so many issues to deal with, you have to frame the focus of those issues in some place so that they can be brought to the broader community for input, dialogue, and hopefully buy-in in recognizing that the change needed, uh, the changes needed have been identified and there has been a serious look at how to go about implementing them. So, the public input will be critical to that process. Once the Blue Ribbon Committee is done with this work, that information will be then brought to the larger community, and anyone who wants to be a part of that process, just like they were a part of the, the uh, uh, master planning process, will have an opportunity to weigh in on that. But you have to start someplace with a focus, and that's what the committee is for, is to make that focus. Their recommendation to me as the emergency manager 
to pass on to the Transition Advisory Board or the TAB will be based on that input. The fourth point is organization development. We're already in the process of reviewing the city's organizational structure, including public safety, the 911 plan, courts consolidation plans, those issues that have come forward just in the last few months, and recommendations on other long-term services and the role of the city administrator, the individual who is appointed as the chief executive officer of the city, we will finalize the organizational re relationship amongst the mayor, the administration, and the council. Because one of the things that I often point to, and since I left in 2004, and people have asked me about where I've been and what I've done, is I always go back and talk about that brief period of time, some five or six months, when I served as the acting mayor of the city of Flint after recall. And the one thing that was most important to me in that whole experience was the ability to get the mayor, since I was the mayor, the council, and the administration to work together. And as I look around, I think there's only one member of the council who was around at that time, uh, but will attest to the fact that we were able, because of that work, and of course we had the emergency manager at that point, uh, at that time, appointed, uh, but that was just about the time I was coming off of my, my stint as the interim mayor. But we were able to get some things done so that when the state came in, we had a blueprint. We had a game plan that was based on meetings and discussions about how to move the city forward. And you all know the rest of the story. We were able to do that, and the city was returned back to home rule uh, from uh, 2002 to 2004, some two years. Now we're in the same situation again, and it's been a little bit longer than two years uh, to do it. And it's going to take a little bit longer because the problems are larger. But what I want you to understand is that you can't afford another trip back into emergency management to try and fix these problems again. I think we have enough of a track record here where we've outlined the process about how to get this stuff done, and working together we can do that. I said it before and I'll say it again. The best way to get me out of here is we work together as a team and make sure we get these things done so that I can go to Treasury and to the Governor's office and say the things that we've done in Flint in 2000 and, and 14 are just as good as the things we did in Flint in 2004 and brought Flint out of that, uh, that situation of emergency. So the organization is going to be important to that, but we'll have to work together on the structure of the organization and understand the responsibilities and the roles of getting that work done. The fifth point, and of course you've heard me talk about this as we've gone forward, is the legacy costs. Retiree health care remains the biggest challenge to managing legacy costs, and the city is currently facing a legal challenge in that regard. It will be unlikely that the financial emergency will be declared resolved until the issue is settled in a manner which does not risk the solvency of the city. Sustaining the changes within retiree health care are essential to the city's future solvency and long-term sustainability. So we will be continuing to work on that issue, recognizing that it is the one deal breaker in this whole issue, if you would, because the cost for providing the benefit, if not mitigated, will simply be the card that falls and causes the whole house of cards to fall. And we don't want that. We're in conversations with um, plaintiff's attorney in this issue, and we're hopeful that we can reach some settlement that goes in the favor of both the city and the retirees. That's our goal, is to make the best situation possible for both parties interested, given the difficulty of the challenge that we face. The sixth point of my uh, seven points is a strategic plan. And those of you know that while, again, not necessarily required by the law, is a good determiner of how you're going to implement your responsibilities and do the things that are necessary to keep the city moving forward post-EM. Uh, the Finance and Administration Committee under the leadership of uh, uh, Councilman Freeman has undertaken this task and has been doing some good work in putting together a strategic plan for you to consider. And the reason why it's important for you to consider is because it is the city's strategic plan. It's not the emergency manager's strategic plan. 
It's not the finance director's strategic plan, but you as representatives of the people of the city of Flint have the obligation to engage yourselves in that process and to put in place a plan that, that looks at the uh, utilization of the resources that we have in providing the services to the people that you represent. The adoption of a long-range strategic plan by the emergency manager, the mayor, and the council for the governing actions of the city will provide a guidance mechanism for determining budgeting priorities, goals, and objectives. When you had a lot of money, it wasn't probably as critical uh, to go through these exercises of planning and uh, forethought and looking at uh, two-year or biennial budget cycles. But as the resources begin to dwindle, it becomes that much more critical because your ability to provide the services not only erodes, but you run the risk of any one thing happening along the process to cause the entire situation to head south and then begin to build structural deficits. So if you build a strategic plan, which under, as I said, the leadership of the Finance and Administration Committee, you adopt the plan and you implement that plan, that's the best safeguard for guidance you can have in staying out of another financial emergency. And finally, the seventh point deals with the sustainability of all of this. You know, it's one thing to put together a great plan and have everybody buy into it and think it's a good thing, but then don't implement it, or at least don't implement it with the same kind of seriousness that I think it calls for in a situation for a community this size emerging from the oversight of the state in a financial emergency. The other six factors for determining sustainability are rooted in the points of the fundamental steps to be taken. But the goal has to be to sustain that work. There's been a lot of work uh, gone, in, gone into uh, the, the uh, emergency management of the city uh, since 2011. Most specifically, the measures that will be evaluated include achievement of some consensus on decision making on the part of the mayor and the council. So there's going to have to be some kind of a sense of how we get things done <clears throat> post-EM that involves the mayor, the council, and the administration in the appropriate roles. Training is it going to be crucial as well. The city of Flint seated four new council members in November, and it's been my goal to provide you with the learning opportunities to, to develop into your roles, and every role takes time to develop into. Even though I've been here before, this time takes time for me to develop into uh, the role that the governor has appointed me to. It's the same with any situation, no matter uh, what the charge or the challenge, you, it takes time to grow into the role. The best way to do that is to seek out best, best practices, to take advantage of the training opportunities, uh, to learn exactly what a city councilman is supposed to do, not based on what you've heard or what you've seen someone do. I had to do the same thing in terms of being the emergency manager. I had to learn what does that mean? You know, what, what, what are the limitations? What are the things that I can or cannot do with respect to trying to make Flint a better place? I had to do the same thing as a city manager. All I'm saying at this, in this uh, uh, point is that whatever we do, whatever we accomplish, and whenever we decide that it's time to establish a transition advisory board, we must be thinking ahead about how to sustain that. Because again, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but a third trip into emergency management uh, will not bode well for the city of Flint. It's one of the reasons why the law was rewritten and there were several op er, options for cities to consider when they can't seem to get it right. But I believe that we're going to be able to get it right. I believe we're going to be able to sustain it. And I think that it's also going to be critical as we go forward to make sure that our operations are sustainable. Which brings me to my final point. It's a sustainability issue, but it's a point that uh, we're going to have to deal with, and that is our water system. As you know, there are some major issues on the horizon in the next few weeks regarding the way the city of Flint provides and distributes water. We're in the process of conducting and it's almost complete. We haven't only we've only reviewed the